did something! Et l'idée où Welcome back to Bloody's Garage. You guys are Bloody's because you follow the channel uh, and that is your plural name. So you have to live with it. Uh, thank you very much for visiting. Uh, if you have come across this video, you're probably wanting to fix your underboost issue uh, on your 1.9, maybe the two, well, on quite a few different engines to be fair, 1.9s, 2 litres, 2.5 diesels. Um, now the faults I have with this van when driving, it's very laggy. When the turbo finally does kick in, which is very late because it's about 3000 RPM, uh, in low gears, it's fine, other than the lag at the start. In high gears, it surges and you can feel it pulsing as it drives, and then it drops into limp mode. And you have to turn it off, turn it on again, and you get a bit of power back. Um, that is the fault that I've got. When you plug a scanner in, it brings up the code PO299, which is underboost. Um, predominantly on these engines, on these type of engines, it is vacuum related. Uh, it is very cold. Uh, it's vacuum related um, we will be taking a look at the vacuum side making sure we've got enough vacuum uh, looking for any leaks and changing anything that needs to be changed specifically we'll be looking at the N75 valve because that is what controls the vacuum on these type of engines now this video will be good for anything on the VAG sort of world so any Skoda, Volkswagen obviously this is my transporter uh, Audi uh, even on other cars they've all got a very similar setup um, so this will be handy for any of you um, wanting to test it. Uh, I do actually use a vacuum pump and test it. So you'll see the testings and readings and stuff like that in this video. So hope you enjoy. Make sure you like. So we have our code reader and I want to quickly get the codes up. So I've been driving. It's been dropping in and out of limp mode. Every time I restart, it clears the limp mode and then it's fine for a while and then it comes back but this time it came back and it actually brought the engine management light on which it didn't do that before so that is different there is one code it's still the same code as before even when i had the limp mode and get no reflection or something there we go po299 generic turbocharger supercharger under boost current fault pending fault it's exactly the same uh, I can erase them, it will clear the light, but obviously it doesn't clear the fault. So now we need to uh, see if we can find out why it's doing this. So here we have the 1.9 TDI engine in our transporter. This is the same engine that goes in a lot of Volkswagens and very similar to Audis and Skodas and any one, any car really from the VAG group. They're all very similar, but they all have a very similar valve up here. It's called the N75 valve, and what this is, is it receives a vacuum from the engine, and then it uses the vacuum inside that to control the turbo's actuator. It also sends the vacuum through a load of pipes to the uh, brake booster on some vehicles. Uh, if not all, I'm not 100% sure on that, um, but it also gives you a vacuum for your brakes. So if you have issue with your brakes, it could also be to do with this valve as well, if you don't have a lot of pressure there. Um, so what we're looking at today is this, this valve, like I said. Now, this particular car has a PO299 fault, which is under boost. Um, common faults, really, under boost and over boost. Now, on these engines, you can get an over boost where the vanes get stuck on the turbo. Um, I've got a video for that as well. Check out where I clean the turbo out with uh, Mr. Muscle Oven Cleaner. Uh, but this particular code uh, is under boost and it's likely caused by that valve not actuating the turbo properly. Uh, it could also be a stuck actuator. We don't know yet, but there's a good chance it's going to be this valve. So we're going to pull off the pipes. We're going to use a vacuum tester and we are going to see what vacuum we get. The first thing we have to do is we're going to get our vacuum tester and we're going to plug into this pipe just here. You can see it goes to the valve, but this is the vacuum that comes from the engine. So we need to make sure we have a good vacuum here first. Uh, we also then need to test the vacuum that goes down to the actuator. It's a bit hard to see in this current light, but uh, the actuator is in rough, roughly the middle of the screen. And that's this uh, this pipe here 
that goes off down there and that's what controls it so we're going to manually pull a vacuum with our tester on this pipe to make sure there's no leaks coming from the engine then we're going to take the pipe off and we're going to pull a vacuum on the actuator to make sure the diaphragm isn't leaking and if both of them two are okay we're going to then start up the engine we're going to see what vacuum we're getting back on this pipe to make sure we're getting full vacuum from the engine and then we will move on to the one that goes down to the actuator to see what the valve is doing and how it's actually actuating it so we're going to need to get our tester here we have a very simple vacuum tester from ebay this cost about 11 quid we need this little device because this is what we're going to use to pump up to get the vacuum and then one a piece of pipe that fits on this and a t-piece and a piece of pipe to replace the connection on the van or on your engine not 100 percent sure why my lights are flickering on this camera because they're brand spanking new led ones so yes i'm going to uh, put the camera down i'm going to put this t-piece on the end of here connect onto there with this connect this pipe onto this end and then connect this end onto the pump and then i will pull a vacuum and we'll see what it does I've connected the pipe actually directly straight onto the pipe that goes to the engine manifold because um, I want to test to make sure this is holding vacuum. So we're going to pump it up. You can see that the gauge is starting to go up. Pretty loud bird. Keep pumping. Pump, 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 pump. Get to a relatively decent pressure. So we're at just over 20, uh, just over 20 inches of mercury and the gauge is holding steady she's not moving we have no leaks on this side so now we need to test down to the actuator and what we're going to do on the actuator is actually test if the diaphragm inside is actually leaking so release this pressure there we go and i'm going to swap this over onto the other pipe so i'm connected into the other pipe which goes down to the actuator and we're going to do the exact same thing as before. Pressure comes up a lot faster on this one. We're going to pump it up. So this is now pulling a vacuum on the diaphragm. If you had a split diaphragm in your actuator, this vacuum would now be dropping. So if yours is dropping when doing this test, that is your fault. You have a split diaphragm. But we do not. So we need to continue and investigate a bit more. So I'm going to plug the pipes back in. I'm going to put this T-piece now in between this pipe and the uh, N75 valve that goes down to the actuator so I can then get the vacuum through the valve and then down to the actuator itself um, and we'll see what it does when it runs. So the engine's running and we're holding about 24, 25 inches, yeah, inches of mercury on idle. I'm going to get my fiance to rev the van and what this is going to do is we're going to see what pressure it's sending down to the actuator. So I'm going to get to go to 2000 RPM. 2000! Still holding good. 3000! Back to 3,000. I done. So, that's not good. Because as we saw that first time, it went back to uh, max vacuum. And this time, it has not. So the valve has got stuck inside. Uh, something's not quite right there. So we'll do one more test while it's running and we'll check what vacuum the engine is making uh, first. So I'll quickly change the pipes over. So I was wrong earlier on in the video where I said that the vacuum comes from here. That is the vacuum uh, re reservoir, I got this wrong. So that's a reservoir and the vacuum pump's down there. This pipe comes from the vacuum pump. It gets split here. Uh, this main pipe that goes across here goes to the brake booster. That's how you get your assisted brakes. Uh, and then you have this pipe that comes up here to the one-way valve and then sends the spare vacuum as it is down to the reservoir and then the other bit up into the N75 valve. So we're going to fire the engine up in a second. My fiance is going to do that and we're going to see what vacuum we get. Uh, providing we get a decent reading over here somewhere, we know that the vacuum pump is perfectly fine and there is also no leaks anywhere else. Grace, go ahead and start. 
there you go. There's nothing wrong with the vacuum we're pulling. In fact, that's like maximum vacuum. So we know the problem we have is with our valve. So now we need to get ourselves a new one and get it fitted. So I just happen to have a brand spanking new OEM spec Pierberg N75 valve. Because the one that on my van is not an original one. It is a cheap eBay one at 20 quid. Now, this was 40 quid. Yes, it's twice the price, but it's 40 quid. It's not exactly expensive. So, why I got this, we can see how it's going to fit. And you can also see the pipes we have here. So, we have these two here, which are the bolts that obviously go on there, like so. That way round, cracking me out, spinning me out then. So, yeah, we have a nut there. And not the other side, we're going to undo them and that's going to fix on there. This is the electrical plug. This is the pipe, which is the little air filter, which I'll show you when I pull it off. Then you have the vacuum in and then the vacuum that goes down to the turbo. And that is it. That is it. There's nothing else to it. Looks like there's two nuts. Uh, they are 8 mils or 10 mils. Not 100% sure. I brought the both spanners with me to figure out what they are. This is a 10. It's probably a 10. It's a 10. So I'm going to get them two nuts out so we can get the thing off, disconnect this electrical plug, and I'll show you the filter and that once I've got it off. Excuse my flashing lights. I'm still not sure why they're flashing at the moment. Um, right, so here we have the one I've taken off. Apparently I was a bit of an oaf and I broke the end bit uh, when I did it. Uh, and here we have the new shiny Pierbo one. 40 quid, 20 quid. Let's get the proper one. This is the uh, air filter where excess vacuum must escape. That goes on the, bl the black pipe. This one on the end is the one that comes from the vacuum pump and this one in the middle is the one that goes down to the actuator. Uh, make sure you put them on the right way round. Or you'll tend to find one of the pipes doesn't want to fit very well because one is a little bit thinner. So the thinner one obviously goes on the back which comes from the vacuum pump and the fatter one that goes to the actuator is the one in the middle. Now there was two knots that hold on, held this on. I undone one completely and undone one halfway and then it allowed me to pull it off and pull that one off as I say at an angle and it was off. So now it's time to get this one fitted. Uh, and for those that watch the channel regularly, <laughs> I'm using a new camera mount, so hopefully there's not a lot of squeaking and noises and stuff like that that uh, we used to hear and whinge about. So, all right, now we're going to get this fitted. Uh, I'll quickly show you the pipes before I actually bolt it on, and then you'll know which way they go. So last but not least, this is the layout. This is the actuator. This is vacuum pump, as you can see, it's here with its valve. Um, gonna sit this back. I have to take the pipes back off again. Sit this back on there. Put the nuts down and put the plug on. Hey presto! And then we'll do a quick vacuum test so you can see it working and what it should look like when it works. All the vacuum pipes are plumbed in. I put the tester back in on the line that goes down to the actuator, so you can obviously see what it's about to do. Last thing to do is this little plug. And here it clip. There you go. Uh, this is on, like I said. So when Grace does fire up, we will get vacuum and then we'll see what it does when she revs. So fire up please, Grace. So there we go. That's the vacuum going down to the actuator at the moment. 2,000 revs. 3,000 revs. And that's the main thing, when you go back to idle, it comes back round. That means it's adjusting the arm back and forth, instead of adjusting it and getting stuck and then not doing anything. 3,000 revs. Idle. There you go, that is a working N75 valve. Okay, you can turn her off. Okay, turn her off. There we go. So that is a working valve. Hence where we have the pressure and it moves, it doesn't get stuck. So we will have no fault codes. So what you need to do now is take her out for a drive and fingers crossed, you don't go into limp mode and you have no issues. Oh yeah, but obviously take your, your vacuum pump off. So we're out in Allen after putting the new N75 valve on and what a transformation. It's back to being how it should be. I can put my foot down in any gear and it actually accelerates from low revs where it just wouldn't do that before just wouldn't even think of accelerating from anything less than 3000 rpm 
we're now it will pull from 1800 ish so the turbo is doing what it's doing the actuator is doing what it's doing the actuator is actuating and the turbo is turboing so everything's working fine um so that was a nice easy fix and it only cost 43 quid for the part i have took alan that is the name of my van i've took him out for a drive after fitting a new n75 valve and it's just back to how it should be originally from factory um it, there's the low boost and then there's the high boost there's, there's no issue it just it drives as it should there's no surging there's no limp mode there's a hill near me which went into limp mode every time i went on it um it, it flew up it was absolutely fine that is fixed my fault i've checked for scanner and there are no codes there's no nothing pending and there's no codes and there's no limp mode so this has fixed my fault a new N75 valve at the cost of 40 odd quid and hey presto we are back to where we should be I have dirty hands <laughs> i hope you've enjoyed this video uh, i do have plenty of other tutorials and i've got a full camper van conversion series coming with my van alan and um, hope you can stick around if you're new to the channel uh, if not i hope you enjoyed your stay and i'll see you in another video soon hopefully take care bye bye stay humble peace I'm something! Really do. <laughs>